1960 saw brilliant progress by America in the allied fields of science and defense. Feats of space exploration included the Tyros Weatherman satellites, which broadcast pictures of the Earth's atmosphere and cloud cover. Space research produced advances in global communications, too, and the year saw the first recovery of Discoverer satellite capsules out of orbit. At the year's end, the first man in space attempt seemed close at hand. The unknown reaches of the great oceanic deeps were plumbed by a United States Navy bathyscaphe with a pioneering dive to the deepest known chasm on Earth, the Marianas Trench in the Pacific. Into the undersea realm moved America's front line of global defenses as the combination of hydrogen warhead missile and nuclear sub became operational. The George Washington went on patrol, a full cargo of Polaris missiles. Monkeys are serious business at Holloman Air Force Base despite their inevitable antics. These chimps are slated for a mission in space. One will go aloft in the Mercury capsule designed for America's first human astronaut. And before he does, he gets the same intensive scrutiny and preparation as the Project Mercury spacemen. The chimp will provide unique and invaluable medical information before a man risks his life, as well as actually testing the capsule's life support, escape, and other systems as they operate in space. Their training at this New Mexico base includes education, Learning to push a lever 50 times gets him a food tablet. A flashing light signals the water supply. Here's a more complicated operation, three levers to operate. Sort of a chimpanzee Las Vegas, but with a most important purpose. masters the combination and gets his reward. All the resources of science and technology have been dedicated to assuring these chimps the same chances of survival that the humans who follow them will have. At Cape Canaveral, the Redstone rocket stands ready to carry aloft a chimpanzee in the final test of the Mercury space capsule before a man flight into the void. A carefully trained chimpanzee named Ham is carried to the same survival capsule that will lift America's first Mercury astronaut into space and carefully strapped into place. On the success of this test depends the schedule of the first human astronaut. The chimp has been trained for a program of button and lever pushing. Any variance will indicate an adverse effect of low gravity or the high acceleration of the missile's flight. In his survival capsule, the 37-pound chimp is the largest animal ever to be rocketed into space. Stone rocket goes aloft carrying the first astronaut in the $400 million Project Mercury Man in Space program. The rocket hurdles aloft at a speed faster than that programmed, higher, faster, and farther than intended because of an inaccuracy in the thrust regulator of the rocket engine. More than 150 miles above Earth, the chimpanzee's space capsule reaches its maximum height. The firing of the rocket booster gives the capsule even more velocity than intended. The capsule hits a maximum speed in excess of 5,000 miles an hour before it's released to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Twenty miles downrange from Cape Canaveral, the capsule descends into the Caribbean, where Navy vessels converge on the capsule. The Astro Chimps ride came in the same week. America successfully fired a Samus spy satellite into orbit around the moon and launched a Minuteman missile 4,000 miles downrange.
three years to the day after the launching of America's first satellite, Explorer 1, the chimpanzee astronaut returns from space. Despite the intensive monitoring of the flight by every scientific device available, until the capsule was recovered and Ham the Chimp actually examined, there could be no certainty as to the effect of his journey into space. But the happy reactions of the first space voyager are a good omen for the first venture by man. in history, the chimp who pioneered the way into space. But famous or not, he seems mostly happy to be back among friends. At Cape Canaveral, an Atlas rocket is poised to carry aloft a man in space capsule to test the vehicle's ultimate capability. carries the capsule to 107 miles, then slams it back into the atmosphere under the worst possible conditions. A similar capsule carried Ham, the astro chimp, even higher, and most likely will carry America's first human astronaut into orbit. It is retrieved by helicopter and brought back for an examination which indicates, even under this grueling test, that a human passenger would have survived despite forces 16 and a half times that of gravity and exterior temperatures enough to have vaporized iron. It's a major stride forward in America's program to put a man into space. Immediately afterward, the seven astronauts trained for Project Mercury and shown in these earlier scenes were screened down to three, one of whom will make the first flight into space. From an undisclosed launching site in the Soviet Union, a multi-stage rocket takes off, successfully launching a man into space. An historic achievement and a victory for the Soviet in the race to achieve the first manned space flight. These sequences graphically show the path of the Russian cosmonaut, Major Yuri Gagarin, on his single spin around the Earth. A 108-minute flight at more than 17,000 miles an hour. As the story was flashed around the world, congratulations poured in for the Soviet scientists and for Major Gagarin, whose name becomes immortal with this feat. In Washington, President Kennedy, who had earlier sent praise for the Soviets' outstanding technical achievement, told Americans that the United States would not match Soviet capabilities in space for some time. He went on to place the historic event in clear perspective. This Redstone missile is the center of world attention as Commander Alan B. Shepard, Jr. watches some final preparations before the United States attempts to put its first man into space. The 37-year-old Navy test pilot seems to be the calmest man of the hundreds involved in the launching as he walks to the elevator that will carry him 65 feet to the capsule. Hundreds of missiles have been launched from Cape Canaveral, but for the first time there is to be a man aboard just three weeks after the Russians say they orbited Yuri Gagarin around the Earth. While that flight took place in complete secrecy, there are hundreds of reporters here today to witness the flight of Commander Shepard. He gives the capsule a once-over with a test pilot's keen eye and gives a reassuring pat to standby astronaut Lieutenant Colonel John Glenn. It's his moment of destiny as he moves forward to the entry platform. It's 6.20 a.m., more than three hours to launching time, as his protective boots are removed and he prepares to take his place on the contoured couch in the capsule. Countdown is now approaching zero, and the tension is broken only by murmured prayers and quietly voiced hopes. Two years of work, tests, and more work are climaxed with zero.
forms perfectly as it lifts the funnel-shaped capsule gracefully aloft. Named the Freedom 7, the Mercury vehicle could be released by either the pilot or ground control should something go wrong. But quickly the reports come back. Everything A-OK, -okay, A-OK. -okay. The burned out redstone separates and weightlessness begins for Shepard. As the escape tower is jettisoned and he reaches his top altitude of 115 miles. As he contacts the base, special cameras record his reactions, something the Russians either failed to accomplish or failed to reveal. He now takes over operation of the pitch and roll of the capsule, thus becoming the first man to pilot a space vehicle. Fiberglass absorbs heat as he faces backwards on re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. He then fires the retro rockets that slow the capsule's downward fall. At all times, he is in contact with ground bases, and 302 miles from takeoff, the space vehicle drops to the sea, where helicopters from the carrier Lake Champlain are poised for recovery. These remarkable pictures show Commander Shepard crawling from the Freedom 7 as the sling from the aircraft is maneuvered within his reach. It's clear he suffered no ill effects, though he endured a gravitational pull that made his weight seem like 1,600 pounds. historic flight lasted only 15 minutes, but its telling effect on an electrified world is unprecedented. The proof was here for all to see that a democracy dares pioneer without secrets, dares defy failure without censorship. The capsule carried more than Commander Shepard along. It carried the bright banner of freedom. The astronaut walks jauntily from the helicopter. The victor returning from a conquest of the outer world. Exhaustive physical checkups that follow his return show no ill effects and raise hopes that the United States may orbit a man around the Earth before the end of the year. And that man will have to follow in the star steps of Alan Shepard. Five hours before he is destined to take a giant stride into history, Colonel John H. Glenn, Jr. squeezes into his spacesuit. His smiling face belies the 10 postponements of his flight that have kept him grounded. This morning, the weather over Cape Canaveral and in the pickup areas is better, and there's an air of optimism as the Colonel walks to the gantry elevator, carrying his now familiar portable air conditioner. Glenn prepares to go to the 11th deck as clocks point to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The skies are beginning to lighten, and a cool north wind rustles across the Cape. Colonel's date with destiny comes 10 months after the Russians claimed an orbital flight by Yuri Gagarin, and less than a year after Alan Shepard blazed a suborbital trail for the U.S. This is the climax of three years of training. This is the moment when the eyes of the world turn to Cape Canaveral. The Russian orbits were in a thick fog of secrecy. The United States stands or falls in the white-hot glare of worldwide publicity. In the capsule atop the Atlas missile, the Colonel will be strapped to a contoured couch. Once in flight, the Mercury will be tilted so that the astronaut will ride backwards. The seconds tick off as his rendezvous with space approaches. The hatch cover causes a slight delay when a defective bolt is discovered. Then, millions are moved to silent prayer. on the Atlas, blasted off by 360,000 pounds of thrust, carries the Mercury gracefully skyward. The Friendship 7, climbing rapidly out of the Earth's atmosphere, exerts a pressure of six times the force of gravity on the astronaut. Loud and clear, he reports back to Mercury Control, reading off his instruments, commenting on his reactions, all as coolly and calmly as if he was commuting on the 827. Glenn is able to control the yaw and pitch of the vehicle himself. Now comes the moment when the Mercury is turned so that Glenn will be seated facing backwards. He checks with ground control. 
Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. Roger, turn around has started. Capital turning around, and I could see the booster turning turn around just a couple of hundred yards behind me. It was beautiful. Uh, Roger, seven, you have a go, at least seven orbits. Roger, understand go for at least seven orbits. Actual pictures of Glenn in the capsule will give scientists the opportunity to study his reactions as he passes over the Canary Islands, Africa, the Indian Ocean, Australia, back across the Pacific and over the United States. He speeds at 17,500 miles an hour, reaching a high point of 160 miles and a low altitude of 99 miles. Each of the three orbits takes about 90 minutes. Three times the colonel sees the sun rise within a period of four hours and 56 minutes. Three times around the globe for a trip of 81,000 miles before he re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, a shield protecting the astronaut from the intense heat. The carrier Randolph is the command ship in the pickup area, but Glenn, instructed not to jettison his retro rockets, lands short of the carrier. Ground instruments indicated his heat shield was loose, and he was instructed to hold onto his rocket bank to help hold the shield in place. Right at hand, however, is the destroyer Noah, and she speeds to the capsule to take the vehicle and pilot aboard. Despite a few shaky moments among ground control personnel, Glenn is down, hale and hearty. With support cables attached, a pincer-like crane will lift the Friendship 7 aboard. of a saga. The now famous Friendship 7 is safely lashed to the deck of the destroyer and the crew prepares to help Glenn from the capsule. First they attempt to help the colonel from his complex prison through the upper exit in the mouth. They encounter difficulties and so it is decided to blow off the escape hatch cover. First glimpse of the conquering hero, Colonel John H. Glenn. He left his footprints among the stars. He has a grin as wide as the path he blazed as he rests briefly before being flown to the carrier Randolph by helicopter. He is lifted aboard in a maneuver that looks more dangerous than the flight itself. Helicopter takes him to the Randolph for a debriefing and examinations by medical men. The copter no sooner touches down on deck than Glenn gets a preview of the congratulations that are still to come. On every hand there is jubilation, on every side smiles and cheers. He signs over his precious log and instruments to the National Space Administration. From here he goes to Grand Turk Island for further rest before the deluge. A deluge of honors, a proud country waits to bestow on a brave man. <laughs>